and we're live. All right, we are live. Welcome everyone on this very, very special event of virtual domain driven design meetup. So we are going to try out event storming online today, which is, I think, I believe that no one did before. So it's a very new thing. And basically we have no expectations. So no one here has expectations today. We don't know what to expect. We are very curious about that. So let's just jump in. Uh, and I'm going to pass over the mic for uh, people here, for the uh, panel presenters to introduce themselves very short, um, quickly. Uh, I, myself, I'm Jofia, I'm a product manager and basically a DDD enthusiast and I really love event storming. Uh, I'm a DDD fan for two years already. So let me pass it over to uh, Barry uh, to start the introduction. Okay, no problem. Hi there. Um, my name is Barry O'Sullivan. I am a software contractor in Ireland. Um, I specialize in legacy web applications, so usually code that has no domain-driven design in it, and my role is to dive into that and try to extract the domain concepts and make it testable, and I have to say DDD is invaluable in that. And event storming is actually one of the tools I frequently use to understand not just what the state people think the system does, but what when the people give contradictory descriptions of what the system does. So uh, I'm very much looking forward today to seeing what we come up with with uh, online event storming. Cool. Thank you, Barry. So Maxim can go next. Hi, everyone. I'm Maxim, and I'm uh, the uh, new crafts uh, conference organizer one of the new crafts organizer actually. And I'm a big fan of event storming and um, I'm doing a lot of event storming and I cannot think um, I am now able to, um, to get into and dive into uh, any domain without uh, having an event storm before. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited to do uh, this uh, online uh, experience today and uh, we will see uh, what we get at the end. Cool. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, our host, Kenny. Yeah. Hi, I'm Kenny Bas Spechler. I'm a strategic uh, software delivery consultant, uh, really into event storming and all things DDD, uh, trying to help uh, companies yeah, uh, grow on their strategic software delivery with these things. Cool. So, hey. And last but not least, because he is our event storming facilitator today, Marco. Yeah, hi. Off. yeah, hi, myself. Right, um, <laughs> Marco. I'm myself, and I've been doing domain-driven design and event storming for up to a decade now with DDD, and six, seven years with event storming. I think ever since Alberto coined the term, and um, I can't imagine to model any domain anymore without doing an event storming up front and all the way in between. But I've been always doing it in collaboration with people in a room because I think it's very important to stand together in a room to get the body language and the, and the mimics and all the details and see where people are actually moving. And I always said you can't do event storming online. You can't really collaborate um, digitally. But I always said that without actually ever trying. So I'm really excited today to learn and to challenge my own belief that it's not possible and see how much is possible when you do it. So there's three different kinds of event storming just up front. There is big picture event storming to explore a problem space completely together with business experts and developers. There is process modeling where it's about a business process exploration, um, where it's about exploring how certain business processes work um, on a more detailed level. And then there is software level um, event storming where we try to design aggregates and commands and events down to the implementation level to get a clean implementation model that is not written in code, but in sticky notes with experts. We're sticking to the middle thing today, to the process modeling, and we chose as a domain conference visitation by an attendee. So um, since we, most of us are actually visitors at conferences or organized conferences even, um, we are kind of domain experts already, and we're also software developers. So the perfect mix of people to, to model this domain, actually. So the idea is you are an attendee at a conference and you have a certain journey, certain things are happening. I want to model with all of you. How can we, um, how does the process of going to a conference actually work for you? From the initial idea of, hey, I want to be there until you went there, you paid, you saw what you saw. And let's start with domain events. So everything in past tense that could have happened to you. 
Um, an event is basically an orange sticky note. And Kenny, if you could switch to the board now so we can actually see the modeling surface that we all collaborate on. Yes, and we got a special guest uh, just joining us in who's muted. But... No, oh, yeah, it's better that you keep him mute. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, you should be able to see uh, my screen now. Yes, wonderful. So um, everybody who is joining on the video, you can see the Miro surface. And now actually I can't model anymore, let me switch that. So um, you see the Miro board, which is our online tool to move sticky notes around. And if you zoom on top of the event storming logo, there you see the legend um, how a process model event storming should look. So these are the different colors that we were gonna introduce over the time. And we'll start with events, the own sticky notes. An event is something that happens in past tense. So any factual thing that happened in your domain, you can put on there. And I would urge all the modelers in the room now, that is Kenny and Sophie and Barry and Max and Alberto and me, to write down the whole journey from the perspective of the attendee, anything that happens to the attendee in the flow of the process of a conference. We'll time map this to five to 10 minutes or until we see the flow ebbing off. So I'm gonna start with the first one. You can just take an event, hit control D and then move it down to the stream and then type in whatever event comes to mind. So far so good? Yeah, I just yeah. need the editors, right? <laughs> I'm just readily actually. Oops, yeah, that's it. Okay. So the time stream should go from left to right. So the more left you are, the more in the past, and the more right you are, the more in the future the event happened in the process. And um, just model ahead. Anything that comes to mind, start with whatever you think is the most important event in the process as an attendee. I think this is the most silent session we ever had. <laughs> so far, yeah. Wait, wait until so, we start showing each other's flow, looking at each other's for flows, then the words will start flying. Okay, so I've been already looking and editing other people's flows. Um, somebody wrote down, <laughs> I got sick before the conference and I just have yeah. two ideas. You could either refund your ticket um, or you could get your ticket refunded or alternatively, you could have picked another attendee in your place. No. So, uh, Maxime, you yep. didn't have access, right? Do you have it yep. now? Uh, I will refresh that. And I don't have any access, right? I think. Yeah. You don't? No, I don't. Hmm. So, here we already have the first. Uh... You should have. So, it, uh... Oh, maybe you're on the different account. Which account are you on? Uh, <laughs> good question. The Encrofts uh, or the, 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 the Gmail one? I think I added you for the Gmail one. Okay, so let me try with the, the, the other accounts <laughs> well, again. There no we problem. already have the first uh, <laughs> annoying part, right? Yeah. Access right. Oh, well, that's the first time that... Uh... Let's do that.
Yeah, that's better. Um, <clears throat> Thank you, Kenny. Cool. I added your most favorite one, Alberto. Just putting a name between yours. Used coupon on ticket. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I'm stopped checking Q&A now. Kenny, could you zoom in a little on the big board so that attendees on the YouTube can actually read a little on the tickets? Yeah, like this. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, good. And... Okay, so... There's a little duplication going on, so I'm I'm, I'm going to start and uh, look for duplicate tickets and try to put the time frame a little in order and clean up the mess a little. If you if you're out of ideas and didn't don't write any more events, join me in cleaning up the whole model. Um, event cancelled and conference got cancelled. Seems similar to me. Um, who wrote event cancelled? Mm, I, I, I did the event cancelled. Yeah. So uh, do you mean the conference? The yep. whole thing? Yep. Okay. The whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's the same for the conference. Got cancelled. So that it might be the same. Yep. Yeah. So if you're, if you're okay with that, I would get rid of that sticky. Yep. Yeah. Sure. sure. Yeah. So which one? Conference got canceled. Uh, event canceled. So now I don't see the stickies that got can that got uh, refactored, right? Good point. That's a shame. Let's just make this a darker shade. No, we can't. Okay. Ah, uh, maybe. Yeah, we put it in italic. We can put it in italic. So um, I'm going to make it italic <laughs> if it's invalidated, and I'm going to put it up yeah. on the screen. No, down on the floor. Right? That's Ah, so that's that's one I'm gonna write I'm gonna write them on the index card. So um, you're saying one thing that we can do is uh, how to deal with uh, with invalid events, something yeah. like that, right? The question would be how to deal with invalid events, and the answer would be in this case uh, make them. Another, another font, or is that something we might want? Or where did you move it now? Um, to the bottom. Oh yeah, I'm I see. An area called remove tickets yeah, because I we don't have a floor where we can throw tickets to, right? Yeah. So yeah. this is going to be a virtual floor now. Cool.
So, uh, we've got a few questions. Yeah. So, uh, is it uh, so? Is it possible to know who wrote a sticky note without asking? That's the first uh, question from Rafa. Who wants to answer on that one because that's something that you would experience in a real life event storm, right? Can recognize the writing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, you can't recognize the writing yet, but, but with 20, 30 people, that's hard, right? Yep. So, uh, yeah. would, would we want, do we want to know is the answer, right? I would uh, say yes. If you read the sticky, or is it a good thing to find the person because that, that, that generates more communication, right, and interaction? Yeah, if it, I mean, if we don't understand quite exactly what the person was meaning uh, with what she she wrote, uh, maybe we can ask who wrote that one, and then get into more details and and as you said, trigger some some conversation. Yeah, so that's a good idea yeah. to ask. But uh, yeah, I would yeah. say that's that's a good point. Let's take a first break. I think we're almost five to ten minutes in now, and um, have a short recap. So uh, are there any more questions that popped up besides? Um, so, so what would be the answer on how do you know um, who wrote what sticky? Yeah, you don't. That is a problem right now. So if I want to know but, who wrote what sticky, I have to ask. But that's pretty similar to the real event storming. Yeah. Um, you don't really know who wrote the tickets. Sometimes I would you disagree. Oh, you would disagree. Oh, sorry. Hand, handwriting is kind of a signature. Maybe not every single one is, but uh, here is basically designed for uh, uh, having everything looking the same while handwriting, it, it, it's not. So yeah, that's true. It, it's, yeah. uh, this, is, this is clearly something that we, we might lose. And uh, also Miro, I think has only two fonts available by default. Yeah, mm, okay. yeah that's only oh. italic and non-italic. I've, yeah, I've, so, I've, I've put that on, uh, so shall I stop sharing and then and, and we go to the refine section? No, please, please, keep the, please keep the screen for a second yeah, because okay. um, cool. there's an actual problem that is perceivable here. It's there are three rows of events now and they are very distinct. So I am guessing, depending on where the arrows are now, it's one row is Sophia's, one is Barry's and the more chaotic one has been collaborated by two or three people. Yep. So a thing that happens in event storming in a physical world naturally is you walk past those things and you realize, oh, this thing belongs up here and you see the interaction of people. A mouse cursor doesn't really bug me. It doesn't stand in the way. It doesn't, I don't want to collaborate with a mouse cursor. So um, yeah, this is a forced action now, right? If we want to merge this model, we need to do a conscious decision and say, let's merge the models. Um, but since only two people at the time can talk because we have only one microphone connection for everyone, that's going to be a very hard serialized conversation and not a parallel one. So um, <laughs> we got someone raising uh, her hand. Shall yeah. we, we ask her to switch the board off now, I think, and let's show faces. Uh, yeah, let me switch, see if I can go to participants. There we go. Okay, oh, I'll, um, I have someone raising hands. Oh, not anymore. Uh, Stephanie Miranda, you want to say something? Yes. Not? Okay, <clears throat> let's just continue. Okay, so what is your first impression of the first round? Yeah. Anyone? Oh, Start from the uh, top. Can you, do you have any any idea, any um, emotion about this? It's a bit chaotic, and I cannot I cannot see people walk. I, I in a in a last scenario, I like to see where people walk, and that's the whole thing. Alberto, you also talk about right. Uh, follow the people on the board <laughs> to see where they're going, because that way that the body language shows my this is my part right this is what i'm and especially in big picture which we're not doing now but also in the process i can see the group dynamic and i don't see it now and, and for me as a facilitator or someone who participates i find that always really interesting 
Okay, so that's a negative is you don't see the body language and you don't see where they go and collaborate. Um, no. Positive aspects. So positive aspects uh, for now, um, well, the positive aspect is still that it goes quite fast and uh, we're not in the same room. So I think we have a lot of clearance at the moment. Uh, so it does help uh, already. I think there's already power in it itself by sharing it this way and make the implicit explicit and visual. Okay. Another positive thing here is that I wouldn't be able to model with you guys if we wouldn't have this session. I don't think we would be in a, in the same room and doing this in person. So that's great. And yeah. and also this is this feels another way of chaotic thing, which is yeah different from the in person one. But I think it's it's great to experience it. Yeah. So it's able. You're actually able to model with people that you wouldn't model usually because you're not in the physical same yeah. space. Yeah, that's great. Barry, you had something. Um, what I'm thinking at the moment is that while we're working in isolation, and as you say, we, we've kind of lost aspects of uh, body language. Um, but one thing that, that this makes it easy to do is bring people over to your section and then review it. So it's it's um, it's easy for two people or three or four people to collaborate on the same section because we're not all crunched, uh, we're not all crunched in together in physical yeah. space. True. Yeah, that's true. Um, okay, Alberto, do you have an opinion about the? I uh, have the, uh, three or four. So one, uh, it, it's already went up. So the handwriting is lost, and that's kind of a signature. Uh, the thing about the three lanes, actually. And the thing about the body language, I would say it's probably too early to say, like at this phase, this is what usually happens when it's a kind of private note taking and it's not yet the body language thing. Actually, I would say the signal is exactly the same that happens when I'm writing on my private notes on a table before going on the surface. So yeah, yeah it's it just like, so that let's put the, the two dynamics in place. The tool is forcing to make the private note taking visible at the same time screen readability is making it invisible again because uh, if i need to read my stickies i cannot scroll down and read somebody else it is not visible it's there but i have to look at it and i, and I won't be doing it and uh, another thing which is which is getting like uh, a, a pain for me I need the hotspot and I need the hotspot to be twisted uh, 20, 30 degrees. And, uh, and Miro doesn't really like this. And uh, Miro doesn't like, I mean, the color for the hotspot is uh, is kind of weak. I would like to have another color for that. But uh, while well, the choice of the color for the hotspot is, is kind of, uh, what the hell is that? This is horrible. Just trying my best. <laughs> I mean, it's ugly. <laughs> And uh, yeah. so the, this 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 thing is kind of uh... <laughs> I appreciate your effort, but but I'm, but I'm, I'm still kind of kind of disappointed in in um, in, in this. But uh, yeah, we need a way to uh, actually maybe that that is that is the best way. It's not so easy to signal uh, the hotspot quickly. Well, maybe that's. Uh, that, yeah, that, that is the best way. And, uh, and the other thing that I don't like is the color. This color doesn't stand out as much of the, the, the real magenta does. And so the, okay. But the orange <laughs> is fine, right? Well, the, the orange is, is kind of like sticky notes orange, but, but the, the, <laughs> um, the, the hotspots color was, uh, was, was kind, of, kind of lame, actually. Yeah, and I like this one yeah. better. The signal was, uh, was kind of missing for me. Yeah. So yeah, experimenting a little with color so it gets more visible. It might also depend on your screen color temperature and stuff like that. So, Don't put um, the blame on me, please. <laughs> no, I mean not nice you personally. No. I mean people in general, dude. Okay. <laughs> Someone is uh, suggesting to use mural instead of uh, Miro. Maybe there will be uh, some more options and color options, or maybe uh, it would be more easier to see uh, uh, 
some kind of signature. Um, I know there's the possibility on Miro to uh, to put a smiley on the, um, a sticky note, so uh, that would be something that that can be done uh, if everyone is choosing one uh, smiley so or emoji, you can put it on on the uh, on the sticky. But uh, it's not really easy. And uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I would say uh, tool mastery gets in the way. Yeah, exactly. The, the thing about even storming is just like, can you write let capital letters on a sticky note with a marker that's all we need to do yep. while here then th there's there's tool mastery that might get in the way uh yeah. not might be not a big issue for uh yeah software people like us but for uh, uh other other disciplines this might might become an issue and yeah so, yeah might... so certainly you have to really learn how to use miro even if it's pretty simple but it is a tool that you need to learn you need to understand the the whole notion yes. of this moving out. Get that. So um, I suggest after this first round, second round now for the next five to 10 minutes, we should merge the three models. And whenever we come up with a hotspot, if there's a duplication or anything where you think like, oh, this is not right, um, use the hotspot sticky um, that we created now, put it in place. And if you can talk to the person directly, but only two people can talk at the same time. So. Um, we see how that goes. Let, let's find out um, once we start doing it. So let's try to merge the model in the middle model, right? Taking the below one into the middle and taking the upper one into the middle and move gotcha. the stuff around so that it fits. Right. Just, just so that I understand, could you give me a, an anchor ticket for the middle one you're referencing? Sorry, an anchor oh, uh, the, sticky. The middle model is, uh, if you zoom out, the middle line by uh, Zofi. It's a ticket downloaded, attendee registered, conf goodies handed over, so you, you, uh, gotcha. when you go to the top screen of Miro, you can uh, hide and show collaborative cursors. I'm not sure if you all have that yep. field or not. And we can see where you're actually pointing to. Now I just put it off on my screen and it doesn't want to jump in. Perfect. Cool. Okay. So, um, Five minutes starting now, let's merge the models. Okay, yes. let's try, let's do it to it. And I'm already pissed off by zooming out and in. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Up to a good start. Okay. The thing is, um, by the way, in between, I just noticed because I got some disconnects, is every time I, um, I go in, uh, there's, uh, there's a chance that the mirror blocks and you, you don't see anything uh, moving anymore. And it just freezes while you still think you're in. Okay, that's awkward. Uh, I figured this, I, I've seen this happen a lot with Miro where you're idle or not in. And at some point you still think you're in, but you're not. And I, I've used Miro a couple of times for uh, conference talks. And the same thing happens, which is pretty annoying. I just did it. I just refreshed and everything. Yeah. OK, I'm going to start. Yeah, Moving Marco, stuff just, apart. Yeah, it's, I'm just going to, uh, this stuff makes sense in the flow at the rightmost side of what I was working on. So I'm just going to do that. So I'm not going to remove anything. I'm, I'm, I'm moving it over in prep for moving it up into the flow. So Renat is saying it looks like we can change the fonts. And uh, he... <laughs> so if we each choose a font, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. There's a there's a. Okay, okay I, I'll take marker, and then you can choose your own. Right, <laughs> right. I, I'll, I'll um... check it out now and see what happens while you continue with the side. Well, I want to annoy people, so I'm choosing Comic Sans. <laughs> Amazing. Someone just wrote, "If this is not an event, want refund of the conference." Yeah, um, that sounds more like a command, right, into the system. Yep. So let's introduce another color, blue for the command. So if a user in a role has an uh, intention, I'm going to move down a blue one here. It should be the blue color. Can yep. you see it on the screen? Yes, you can. Great. So I can change it automatically. Yeah, sorry. And I leave that and you can change it. Here we go. It's blue now. 
and I can remove that. Awesome. So there, there's interesting stuff. When I go online, I check that there should be more funds available, but I don't see it. So one thing I notice now is that usually in this phase, uh, when I do a real life event storming, there's a lot of talking going on. Yeah, the thing is that here, everyone knows the domain actually, and uh, we don't have to speak to the domain expert and, and well, get do into you think, yeah? I, I think it's not because of that, it's just because we are reading, right? So I, I think a lot of reading is happening and yeah, of course. For this phase, uh, it's it's true. Yeah, I think we're just trying to postpone the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it will definitely okay. happen when we have one single timeline here. So, so uh, Sylvia is asking, what does the green sticky mean, please? Alberto, can you uh, can you elaborate on that, or Marco? Which one? Yeah. It, it, the green it's, sticky. Uh, it's a grid model. It's a, it, it, it goes on. Uh, I, I saw that somebody already starting to use this uh, this one, and, uh, and and in a process model it might happen. Uh, so the thing is, the grid model at this stage might be the information needed uh, in order to make the following decision. And so, well, before ticket type selected, basically. Uh, we need to know, of course, ticket prices and ticket availability and types. And uh, these, these are the two things which come before this decision of selecting a given tip, kit, ticket type. And maybe also payment type uh, uh, might, be, it might be involved. So given the following event, this information need to be displayed on the screen uh, in order to make this decision uh, possible. Yeah. Yeah, so, so one thing uh, usually in an event storming is you have the wall and on the right side of the wall you have the a legend building up iteratively or just in one time. So I will add the legend for these and uh, as a note here. Yeah, we have the legend on top. So Kenny, if you yeah. can zoom up. Yeah, yeah I'm there now with the... With, with, uh, Great. Yeah, but that, that's also the, the, the thing, right? Yeah. Uh, so the idea here is to have an emergent notation. So basically we start with events and uh, um, we just prepare it up there so we can clone it. That makes it simpler for the event process modeling. But in an event storming, you let this emerge, right? Uh, starting with events and then you come up with systems and roles. And afterwards you go to commands and whenever you need, you will present read models. So hotspot is the first one we actually needed to introduce as a secondary color um, to mark the spaces where we need to discuss stuff. Um, but the problem is that you can't have it always visible because you need to zoom in and out. So uh, actually, uh, so the recipe might might be different in uh, in process modeling. So sometimes we we just go straight with the uh, with the legend. And uh, so the the thing about going step by step is actually necessary and mandatory. I would say in in, in big picture because I can assume there's always uh, somebody doing it for the first time. So the onboarding is embedded in the format. But for process modeling, it might be something that you do, uh, yeah, like every few weeks. So you might have a team which is uh, familiar with this. So you might you might say like, this is the notation you have. You just follow the color schema and try to deliver something so you can start uh, playing with different colors uh, yeah, from the beginning, given that you're, from, you're fluent with the, with the color reference. So, so what, what, what you're saying, Alberto, is that if you have an experienced team that has done it a couple of times, that knows the color coding, you will probably go straight into the color coding after the storming of the events? Oh, I would say we might even not do the storming of the events. Uh, it's a way of starting, but not the only one. We might we might start from the beginning and try to follow uh, the color coding until we get to the end. And and when because you say we might when when do you decide that? Uh, well, it depends on the session. Like this, uh, I I am actually modeling this as a, as a collaborative game. And uh, well, the modeling team basically picks their own strategy. Sometimes starting from a, from a storming phase with 
events is the best uh, initial move. Some thumbs starting from uh, picking a starting uh, command and then building up, okay, I have a command, then I need a pink system, then I need a, an orange event, then I need the policy for before another command and right. following the core of structure is the way to go. Uh, yeah. Or sometimes we, we start from the end. So oh. there, there is not, not a single, it, it's a rule space collaborative game and there might be strategy which is, strategies which are best performing in a given situation. But uh, yeah, really depends on the situation, depends how gel the team is, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's more or less the thing. Yeah. So, yeah. so does that depend on if they have a clear outcome or starting position? You might just play by the game first, and if yes. they don't, you start with uh, uh, storming first, right? The chaotic exploration. Or uh, it, the the problem with the with the storming, it just like needs to be time boxed. Or can backfire as written box it so yes uh, but creates a little bit more chaos sometimes i want it so sometimes i don't really want it uh like is is different strategies which are really situational but uh, yeah i don't want to yeah we can talk about it but it might be disrupting uh, uh the the purpose of the of the workshop so i don't want to be yeah so, so my question would be... I think, I think there's two different ideas here. Um, the exploration, the, the collaborative exploration that might lead to a chaotic thing has nothing to do with the emergent structure. So you can have chaotic exploration and have the structure at hand from the beginning, or you can have chaotic exploration and start with only events and, and let stuff emerge once it happens. Um, I think it's totally the experience level of your audience. So if you are in a group of people where everybody knows event storming, um, of course, you can start with the whole notation at once. Yep. Here, especially, we start with a whole audience of people on YouTube who might never have done event storming. So starting step by step um, yep. helps people get along, right? Yeah, I just needed to say like, that's not the only way, it's not a rule, it's a strategy. There might be yeah. different competing strategies for, uh, for winning in the game and depends a lot on the situation you're in. Then I'm totally happy. So, so a question there, would, would Miro, the use of Miro, so go, going back to that, would that more lend itself towards uh, uh, going chaos, chaotic exploration first, or just start by the rules? What, what, what works more for Miro, do you think? Anyone uh, can answer that. Hmm. What is your feeling about that part? Well, I have both feelings at the moment. So um, it's way more chaotic immediately because everybody can write anywhere and there is no physical uh, boundaries. Usually in a room, you are kind of bound by if three people write in one space, you can't stand in the same physical spot. So there's a little bit of physics in your way, which gives a nice break every once in a while, but it's also a hindering factor. So the chaos here is, is quickly there and it can distribute a lot. But it's also very hard to get rid of the chaos here once it's there, which is easier in a physical space because you can actually grab people and put attention somewhere and, and you can have collaborative discussions. What we can do here is only one person can speak at the same time. We can't really collaborate in two groups parallel. That is the biggest hindering factor. So I would say the conversation was not happening. So, so we could have a one-to-one -one person conversation talking to the author but we didn't know who the author was, so we didn't even start the conversation because even if we know each other, we were kind of shy or micro laziness in action. Okay, let's move this one first and then postpone the conversation. Yeah, basically what, what I think or I am wondering about whether it would work better if someone would, uh, so one person to do this uh, merging, so merging the events into a single timeline or trying to merge the events, and in the meanwhile, reading out loud what he or she is doing. And basically that's the place where others could like jump in and say that, yeah, I meant that, or I meant the other thing and I didn't mean that. So maybe that would, I, I don't know, I'm just uh, guessing here. So maybe it would help rather than everyone reads out uh, their own thing in silence. And then uh, we are just watching uh, who, who does what and we are dragging, dropping the events. <laughs> Yeah. So, Maxine, I'm not sure. do, do, do you have anything to add? Maxime? Um, <laughs> no, um, yeah, I think it, that might be a good idea to try. Uh, letting someone uh, speak out loud and reorganize the, the, the stickies and, and see what's happening. 
that 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 might work. Uh, I don't know. We we need to try. Uh, uh, Baron, yeah. what do you um, think? Well, an idea that's not a, not appropriate for right now, but something that might be worth, worth looking into later, is where we've constant we're talking about uh, the problem with conversation, the fact that realistically one or two people can talk, whereas in a real life event storming there'd be much more conversation. Um, it might be possible to solve that with one Miro board and then multiple Zoom groups. So the idea is that if you were able to have it, that people could uh, join a group and then leave a group, and it's kind of like somebody physically moving around the room. So that, that would be like, uh, I, I've done some World of Warcraft in, in the past. They have Ventrilo uh, chat box, right? And I think they have a similar Slack kind of thing I was in last time, where you can create specific groups, but use the same Miro board. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Make it possible for people to uh, uh, metaphorically move around the room and join different sections that are discussing different things. Yeah. So another it, observation. It, it, it feels a bit like the old days with World of Warcraft where I was raiding, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I, I might have to raise my hand here. The fact that there is, there is a solution which is viable for nerds uh, doesn't mean that we have a solution. So. Yeah. A lot, a lot of things in even Stormy are about enabling the conversation with people with a different background. And now we're moving the conversation in a place that requires previous experience with World of Warcraft to be confident with the, with the user experience. Yeah. yeah that's that's my... and, 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 and that's something I wrote down is uh, I cannot see if I'm losing people here. Yep. And especially business people, uh, because for me, this is a natural environment but not for a lot of people. Yeah. So another thing I'm observing here right now is um, when I try to zoom out to see what's happening on the board, I see your mouse cursors moving all over the place. So in real event storming, you focus on a certain area for a short while, unless you're running around in the back of the room. But here it's like zooming into one or two sticky notes, zooming out, moving around. like. I couldn't even have a conversation with you about a certain part until I say, hey, you, stop. Look at these five sticky notes right now. That's really hard. Yeah, so um, I'm not sold on the online event storming so far. Um, <laughs> Same here. Uh, I have a few questions. Shall we, uh, shall we do a retrospect yes, in the please. meantime and have some questions of the audience? Yes. Yeah, so the first one is how do you foster participation when working with beginners? So can we explain maybe how would you do it in a real life event storm versus how uh, would we see that happening in Miro? Yeah, so um, beginners in a real life event storming situation, that is, uh, that's pretty easy because it's a game. And uh, if you announce it as a modeling game and you engage people by bringing out their ideas of how they think the model or the process should work, I'm always encouraging that there are no wrong answers. And if they can't come up with another with their own vision, then use them to, to criticize the vision of the other people, to engage in the questions and answers, and um, just use a creativity to, to always come up with another idea or to find solutions to possible problems on the wall. Um, that is a simple way of engaging people. Um, we, we used um, mentors, so if someone is really shy, but they have a friend in the group that is already more um, part of the group for a longer time, um, use them as a, as a buddy basically for a while to get them engaged. Uh, different psychological tricks to get the person having fun in the game. Um, but while all that is happening, never forcing people to, to having to write on sticky notes. If somebody doesn't want to, um, it should be a safe environment. And that all together gives people a safe feeling and, and makes it engaging to, to, um, to continue working. In online event storming, our experience is now 40 minutes long, so I have no clue. <laughs> I wouldn't know how to actually get a junior or someone who is new to event storming and who doesn't really want to participate to participate because I can't grab you by the hand. I can't point at a sticky note and say, look here, I can't be engaging in a, in, with this virtual distance here. That's really hard. There's, there's how, how, yeah, what do other things of that for people? I think it might be more difficult even online. We, we can think that um, maybe if there are shy people in the room, they will be, uh, it will be more easier for them to, uh, to participate in an online event storming. But if uh, 
I think they will spend too much time as I did actually on this event storming right now, uh, spending time reading what the others were writing on the other um, sticky notes. So uh, maybe they, they will spend their time reading uh, and not writing. So uh, it might be also a problem uh, I, I think uh, during the, the online, I, I prefer, yeah. Um, I'm with Marco with the, um, uh, when he said that uh, you don't have to, uh, to oblige someone to write something and let people act as they want to act. So um, for the, for the, the real uh, uh, even storming, but for, for the online, I think it might be uh, even, uh, and I don't know. I, I don't think it would be easier for for a newcomer to uh, to get into even storming online. Yeah, that's my feeling. The, there's one couple of things here, which which are uh, you can get people into an even storming uh, without invitation, just by running an even storming in an open space where it's visible, and if you're passing by, you can actually join, and you can even leverage this by by putting a little buffet of uh, food and beverages and so people are going to be attracted by food or anything like this clearly this will not work online so well, well they have a solution for that alberto it's called pop-ups <laughs> <laughs> sorry joking okay no i was actually <laughs> worried but uh, yeah <laughs> and uh, but yeah but 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 the thing is uh this is not going to be visible unless people really want to get a look into it. While yeah. an even stormy could happen, you're not invited, but uh, yeah, I saw, I saw you're looking there and I can just like, uh, as an Italian, come in, join, no worry if you're not writing anything, but if you're curious, you, you might want to, want, want to see it. These speak, having a look type of uh, curiosity driven thing is not gonna, going to happen online. And then I think somebody highlighted the other, the other problem that I see, for an observer, for a junior, this is going to be completely mysterious. Like uh, I am seeing sticky notes popping up. I don't understand exactly which are the behavioral patterns. While observing people in in the right world, okay, I might understand a little bit more. Here is quiet, and I just see things popping up. It's really really hard to observe. I, I could not distinguish you from chatbots. Uh, in, uh... And, and totally adding to that, um, as a facilitator, I can't even see if the junior is not engaged or totally engaged um, because I, I don't see who is doing stuff. There's just sticky notes and I can only see the momentary right now, hey, oh, he, he just is writing a sticky note. But other than that, if I'm looking at the board, I don't know who's actually doing stuff or who's just sitting around. In the actual event storming, you see people physically moving. So, yeah. Yeah, my feeling before doing that that experience was that it would be um, a nice thing to do with experienced uh, even stormers and experienced uh, uh, people that knows that know already the the domain, uh, but not necessarily with um, newcomers and and a new domain and and things like that. So that might confirm some things I had in mind with this experience. It might not work uh, on every kind of context. No. Sophia? Or maybe if you are uh, even storming online like now, maybe we should be more specific beforehand and, and maybe like distribute topics, I mean, not topics, sorry, phases in the timeline. So um, do a bit rehearsal and, and talk through the or very, very, very high level process or just the phases in there, not in details and not on the event basis. And we can like uh, say like Barry, you go first with the conference announcement part and and Maxim, you go with the uh, attendee buying the ticket part and and these kind of, you know, we can we can uh, split and and then uh, it would be maybe easier to to do the conversation afterwards still those things which we mentioned already those are really missing so i just can't relate to that so the conversation and and these things but yeah this is just something that i'm i i'm thinking about cool so uh, i want to launch a small poll for the ones uh, uh 
uh, attendees here in check and it's on a scale from one to five do you like event storming on miro so far so i'm launching it now you can uh, you can start uh, uh yeah answer uh submit your question so um how do we continue marco well i'd say uh, the next phase would be to add systems and roles um, so if an event is triggered by a system, put the system um, on the on the right to the event. And if the system triggers an event, put it on the left. Um, the same goes for roles. So to figure out what actors in what roles are actually issuing all those events or affected by it, and what systems interact with the whole process. That's the next phase to get a better understanding of um, what technologies are already in place or what, what solutions do you have in mind of how to improve the whole process. Um, figuring out which technological or organizational systems and roles are in place. Okay. Okay. So um, while you are doing that, I have to leave you in four minutes. So I would hand off to Kenny to continue the facilitation of the event storming. Cool. Leaving you with this wonderful task of adding systems and roles. <laughs> So and exciting. Yeah. Okay. 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 Oh, I have one observation immediately. The thing that always bugged me in analog event storming, when you have a screen of, of stickies that are very close together and you need to add something in the middle, it takes time to move stuff to the sides and keep preserve the structure, right? Yes. And sometimes when it gets dense and you're you're not fast enough as a facilitator to pull everything apart, then it takes a lot of time to actually clean up the board again and again. With analog, I was digital event storming in Miro, you can just copy everything to the side, move everything to the side, and preserve structure perfectly. That is kind yeah. of beautiful. Yeah, the uh, being, might be, being able to drag and select and drag is very handy. Yeah, I love that. Okay, everybody, enjoy the rest of the modeling session. Um, Thank you very much. Thank you, Marco. Thanks, Marco. Thanks, Marco. See you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Yeah, so... Um... This, this is an interesting part because uh, we we are all in a different. Um, this is really specific on the on the on the on, on the context, right? The systems. Which systems are you using? This is specific for multiple conferences. So how do we name the systems? Well, that, that's one place where we shouldn't have this ambiguity. And now, since we are not working for the same organization, we are left with some ambiguity. So let's say if, if the boundaries of a ticketing systems are clear, we might be happy with the ticketing system thing, whether, whether it's even by title or Alfio or uh, anything, anything else. I would say the, the, the important thing might be the boundaries of the system. Like um, yeah, so not, 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 not creating a mega system, which is the only one and doing everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I already see Sophia making a ticket system and an invoicing system and a company permission system. Uh, yeah, yeah so I'm not that specific so here, but. No, so the company permission system is usually uh, these companies have their uh, have, have their local system where you can uh, where you can ask for these kind of things, right? Then they yeah, yeah here I meant that, but I don't know yeah. whether it makes sense. Also, we should be actually writing our domain glossary here, right? Because receipt versus invoice. Yeah, so that's a question uh, that, that was uh, someone. Or maybe not particularly there, but um, uh, I, I think if it's Michiel, Michiel in Dutch, so I'm not sure uh, if he's Dutch, but 
the ticker type means something. Uh, ticker type like single day full comforts probably means something like that. I'm missing a moment where people explain the nouns used on the cards. Mm. We're trying to postpone this conversation. That's another thing. Yeah. But uh, we're trying to postpone that to the end, right? Here. That's what's your answer. No, I, I, don't, I don't know if this is intentional. Like, yeah. I'm actually looking for some other duplicates. We're trying to rearrange and we have duplicates. We are, yeah. for some reason, we're not talking about it. I think the yeah. problem is, is uh, real and that's that that's actually one of the things which is bugging me i'm trying to yeah. go so shouldn't because we, uh shouldn't we do a uh walkthrough first yeah a review of what we have yeah so what that do you we think, can Alberto? all see it i would say well I, maybe we need it that, that that's the way or maybe we pick hotspot but i don't, I don't think the the storyline is consistent. We never had the moment where the storyline was uh, was actually consistent, and so we we might uh, well that might be the, the the right thing to do right now. Okay. So who wants to start from the left? Who wants to start to walk through the explicit walk through? I'll give we it a can, shot. I can see the arrow, so maybe with your mouse you can uh, yeah show us around, right? That's right. Okay, so I assume the leftmost one is a conference schedule published. Yeah. So I'm already nitpicking, but the first thing I'm thinking is it's possible for people to buy a, the blind bird ticket before the conference schedule is published, but that's not really, that's not part of the main flow. We could discuss that afterwards. Um, so conference schedule. Shouldn't we put that somewhere in here, right? Uh, yeah, that's yeah. a hotspot. Yeah, so what about early birds? Even blind without any schedule. Early yep. blind bird tickets. Okay. Okay, great. So <clears throat> then we have checked uh, online for prices. So I imagine this is somebody who is uh, looking at the information, well, wants to look. So um then there are two read models which is the ticket prices and then the ticket availability and types so yep. what i imagine is happening here is that they want to look at what the value the prices are so that they can uh, ask permission so the next thing is, is that there's a system for um company permission system so i imagine that this is asking for permission um i i think that those two are the wrong way around given that the event for asking for permission should what 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 is the company permission system? Um, well, so, I, go on. Uh, I imagine that it is the person that wrote it. That somebody, if they're they want their company to buy them the ticket, so that the company has some sort of process or system in place on whether they give tickets or not. They allow people to attend and whether they'll cover the expenses. Yeah. So this this event came from me, and I've worked at big corporates where you have this. Uh, where you have a budget per year and then internally you need to use this system to ask permission and then uh, the boss can uh, check and give you permission. Yes, it looks like evil. It is evil. I, I don't need to use that anymore, luckily, but it's what we're, it's what most people are dealing with. And uh, I created an event later on that says, well, boss promised me that uh, that my tickets that i got my tickets but they were too late because of the bureaucratic uh, process going on right i've had yeah. that as well but uh, that means that we assume that the uh, attendee is someone uh, is an employee actually and not uh, yeah a freelancer or something i don't know so uh, we need to clarify that uh, i added but, this employee and i would say freelancer don't need this flow Exactly. Makes sense. Yeah, definitely. So should we bring in some arrows now? Well, I don't know about the arrows, but now I'm concerned about readability because I wrote out in this and freelancer and uh, yeah, look, look, look like legal stuff on an insurance contract. So I need to zoom in to understand employee here. Yeah. Oh, yes. It looks like the fine print. Yep. Well, could we, um, 
that might be just because of the scale of it. So if we were to draw it out, it might make it more. I mean, let me see what happens. Okay. There we go. A little bit bigger. Okay, well, do we want to, um, instead of fixing it immediately, will we keep doing the hotspots and try to keep going through the flow? Or do we want to fix things as we find them? Yeah, after, I don't know. I guess we can't fix things as we find them. We can find things with a higher speed than the time needed to solve them. Yeah. But you don't need consensus for finding problems. You need consensus for solving them. So uh, usually it, it, the, the, the action that we do, even in uh, in person, even storming, it's just like uh, you pick an issue which looks like could be solved, uh, and uh, and then we 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 find the solution on uh, on on only one. Like solution making cannot really be happening in parallel because you need consensus with the other members of the team, unless it's something really really stupid or, or easy. But uh, yeah. Okay. okay, so we just continue. Sophia, are you still there? Sure, I'm here. I'm just sometimes I switch off my video because you know yeah, the, I, re I, the reality. <laughs> yeah, but I, I so what I saw happening here was Barry, Alberto, and Maxime uh, switching around with their cursors, and I saw you in the upper right corner. So it's just it is <laughs> a one way of checking if someone's still uh, here, right? Yeah, because I'm now staring at the screen share for some reasons, because I was thinking on something, how yeah. it could be ver better working in somehow else, yeah. so. Cool. Okay, so we are now at the ticketing system, right? Yes. So this is imagining somebody, they're looking at the site and they're choosing a ticket. So ticket type is selected, and then we enter um, a, what looks like a a fairly fleshed out payment flow. So first off, we have payment type selected because it's possible to pay different ways. We also, uh, so first flow we have here is payment type selected credit card. So effectively we just have the success flow for that, which is conf ticket purchased, uh, ticket paid. And there is a credit card validation system and an online payment system, which are both required. Now, would they be one system roll together online payment would that take care of the validation or would they be independent that, I'm, that might be the same so it's probably worth putting uh, i'm just going to copy that is this the same concept and there we go put that there okay so that is uh, the credit card flow then we have uh, a coupon flow which use the coupon on a ticket, which can have a discount applied. Uh, you can also have a, a company bought a group ticket and company bought ticket. So this, uh, these would be the same flows, except it's being purchased by somebody else. So to the attendee, this matters to the company, sorry, to the organizers themselves, it doesn't matter, but that's about just uh, events from different uh, perspectives. Okay, so then we move on to, so is there anything in that that people feel is off or can we move on? So, so one thing uh, that reminds me, if you go to the upper uh, left down corner, you see uh, in, your, in your screen, you see screen sharing in that box, right? Mm -hmm. Can you click on it? And then oh, you yes, myself to, yes, myself to screen share, okay. Yeah, start it. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, one second. Yeah. I just want to try this out. I've used it to, in my conference talk, but then to just track it with my tablet, right? But, uh, okay. Okay. Well, you're 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 still screen sharing, so. No, no, screen share the the on Miro. There's a screen share on Miro. Ah, on, sorry. On mistake. the top left corner, on the white part, uh, in the box, in the down left. Sorry, bottom yes. left corner. There's okay. a video. There's a. Video chat and screen sharing. So can you press the screen yes. sharing? See, if yes. you press it, just press start. Okay, one sec. Which one is it? It's the, uh, that's the one, the one with the arrow. arrow. That's the one with Find the arrow. Yeah, yeah, we're all good. And now I can join. So now I actually see what you're seeing. And 
Now, now you can move on. Okay, great. I, I just joined you. Okay. So See how this works. Nice. Great. Okay, so we have so far we've gotten to here. We've reviewed these events and systems, and we're moving on to the invoicing system at the moment. So this is most likely the invoicing system for, uh, on the DDD EU side, I'm imagining. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, whoever created this. Um, so the first thing we have a receipt is generated and then a receipt is issued. We have a hotspot saying, is this the same concept? A good question. We also have uh, an invoice received, which would be slightly different. I imagine that would go to uh, accounts if it was a company track. And at that stage, you also receive an email from the conference and attendance is confirmed. Actually, I, I would say that uh, the invoice received should go on the, on the purchaser and uh, the email from the conference should go to the attendee. That makes sense, that makes sense. Okay, let's just take a note of that. I'll just put another hotspot for that. And yes, the classic, because I am online, people are watching me, my typing has gone to hell. <laughs> Yes. As is, as is always the way. What you don't see, it's, it's, you don't, people won't know it's you in, in one minute anyway, because it's not your handwriting. That's true, that's true. But sadly, I was dumb enough to announce it to everyone, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we then enter into the, people are getting into the, the flows of flight booked. So this is about getting to and fro. Uh, we flight book, uh, booked and accommodation booked. Um, those are definitely two flows. I could also see flows there of um, submitting that information then to the company. I know we're bringing up the company flow rather than the um, so, uh, contractor flow, but it's just worth mentioning since we started on it, um, that you would probably send that information to get reimbursed for it. You might have that option. So assuming all that's gone ahead, we have then ticket issued and ticket assigned, which has a valid question of, is this the same concept? And ticket purchase. So there seems to be a bit like, to me, that seems a bit muddy and might be worth, the, worth further discussion. Then we have attendee profile created. So this I'm unsure of myself. Does anybody have any points on that one? Um. I don't know uh, who put that one. That one maybe Marco. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, it, it might it might look like uh, so you you're coming. So I might know how to get in touch with you for last minute messages. I need to know something about your uh, uh, dietary requirements. Uh, if uh, if uh, you are uh, yeah allergic to anything or if you have specific. Uh, uh, needs so I'm, I'm, I'm actually trying okay that does make sense because we were asked those questions when we did uh, register for um, and most conferences they'll ask you these questions so it seems like something it may be that one should be further back in the flow so which yes. one were you talking about again uh, that's in deep of our creative ah, yeah, yeah yeah maybe maybe Okay, so then we have um, favorite sessions bookmarked. So I imagine that's somebody who's uh, very who's proactive and is looking at the schedule well in advance and just figuring out what they want to go to. And then they are also afterwards downloading their ticket. Um, and then we have up here uh, a valid event that could happen, which is no more tickets left while a boss promised, which is uh, something uh, Kenny was talking about earlier. Yeah. So I'm adding this, do they, do we want them to still download? I never download my uh, tickets anymore. 
just add yeah this there. depends like the attendee i guess i mean what uh, devices they have or whatever maybe they don't have the smartphone and the ticket app or whatever or or yeah yeah i just think maybe it's a new thing <laughs> It used to okay, be like, so, you know, print it out, go to the yeah. conference, whatever. Yeah, so the no more tickets left while boss promised, by the way. I saw the, the, the tweet from DDD Europe uh, saying that, like, full is really full. So that reminded me of creating this event, right? Yep. So then we have, okay, so we've got then um, the refund flow. So you want a refund and refund requested. And then that is... Uh, you will most likely get it unless there are extenuating circumstances. It's it's um, there's most likely another system in there that you don't control. So it's not exactly uh, one to one. Okay, so then we're getting into okay. Before we get into the actual attendance flow, which is going to it, we've got two more up here. Actually, we've got a couple up here. Uh, preferred sessions picked out or picked up. So that's similar to the one we had. To the bookmark, yeah. Yeah, that's one to the one we had previously. Yeah, not exactly. I, um, I was referring to uh, this uh, lottery going on with DDD Europe when you don't have enough uh, space for everyone to attend the workshops. And then you have to uh, pick up your preferred sessions in advance. And then uh, there's a lottery going on. And then you will be assigned a workshop. Uh, and uh, you need to, yeah order in order of preferen preference uh, what kind of workshop you would like to attend and then the system will decide for you actually okay then that oh, yeah that's okay. that's definitely a compl that's a completely different uh, flow then yep 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 yeah and a very important one um in workshops uh, sorry in uh, conferences that have hands-on sessions with limited space and the frustrating one i would imagine yes <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we have that. Uh, we also have here uh, uh, an edge case, but one that needs to be considered, which is uh, got sick before conference, which then led to ticket being refunded. Yet again, yeah, that would... That, that, there's also that one, maybe that, that could be the same. Yes, that's a good idea. That's a good one. So one, one thing here is, uh, what, is there a limit before we refund? before an attendee can get a full refund, like uh, one week before or one day before, right? Before they can get the full refund. Same as I would go to uh, book a hotel. They say, well, you can cancel one week before and you get 100%. To, to, to it it depends on the rates. <laughs> can I raise a, a, an older motion here, like uh, an older issue? Yeah. Your... Should we talk about it or should we just put a hotspot for this? So I'm, I'm rephrasing it. Like, uh, since we can have only one conversation at a time, this uh, well, natural behavior of what about this, what about this, uh, is actually stopping the whole group and not only the, the next person to you. So I would say in order to make sure the discussion runs smoothly, we really should probably enforce the policy of uh, writing down the issues without stopping the narrator. Otherwise, our uh, yeah, throughput is really 0 0.5 people, kind of, um, kind of this. Yeah, you're right. So, I mean, that, that, that's a distortion of, uh, of the online discussion. If I'm interrupting the only conversation happening, I'm actually stopping everything. Yeah. Good point, good point. Yeah, so uh, is it time for a small retrospective how it's going now since we did the walkthrough? So, uh, and then we do a couple of more questions. Yep. Yep. Let's do yep. it to it. So, who wants to start? How's it? How how's it going? What do you think? I can start. So, like uh, this part, I like better because uh, this is what uh, I mentioned previously that if someone reads out loud, so maybe we now arrive to reading out the domain story a bit earlier than in real life. But I think this serves the purpose of this online event storming really well. So like when someone is reading out loud or we, and, and it is a basis for discussions, I think I like it now better than, than so far. I mean, than previously at the beginning of the session. Yes, I think uh, this 
exercise deserve uh, its own book, actually, uh, with the the recipe to do it well, uh, because we saw that there's a lot of, of things that are different uh, when we are doing uh, real life even storming. So there should be a, li a list of uh, yeah things to pay attention to. Uh, uh, like Alberto said, when we break the conversation and stuff like that, it, that's really important. I think there's a lot of things uh, we noticed that needs to be written somewhere uh, for people who want to try uh, the online event storming. Yeah, I feel like uh, from, from doing this, like it, it took a little while to get going, but we are starting to get a little momentum. We're starting to figure this out and it is becoming very clear as uh, as you said, Maxim, there that the flows are different for the online version versus the uh, in-person version. Uh, now, whether this process actually works or not, I think the jury's still out among everyone here, um, or maybe not. Um, <laughs> maybe I'm not speaking for everyone there. Um, but once we got started actually talking about it and going through the flow and having active disagreement, yeah, I think that's that's when things started to kick off and uh, it made the entire process flow. Cool. Alberto? Um, actually, Maxine said something that I could relate to and it's actually my note at the at the top, like uh, I'm actually not happy with, uh, with the logo and, and the name storming to this thing, which is uh, doesn't feel like a storming to me. I mean, it's uh, is an online uh, collaborative modeling session on top of uh, the even storming notation, but but storming to me means means something uh, something different, and uh, and we can't we can't really have it. Like the mo I mean, I I agree with uh, with Sophie that this is better because now we focus on. Uh, on the, um, on the on the main flow activity, we started to, to having a discussion, but discussion never got to the point of being a storming. So is uh, I would say it's another thing. It's just like we we are using the same notation, uh, trying uh, trying to achieve some result, and uh, yeah, well, some result is achieved, but uh, I wouldn't use the storming thing. Like uh, I I have to admit, I kind of protecting my. Uh, my my brand so <laughs> there's my interest in something <laughs> yes uh there's but, another uh, book to write alberto yeah that, 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 <laughs> that, that's a threat i mean just don't not even uh, don't even think about it uh, but, uh, <laughs> but no it's, it's another thing i i really like when you say like no it has different dynamics and uh, and it should be tweaked around these dynamics in order to make it to make it flow there are so many little tweaks uh, in uh in yeah, impression, and we need a different set of tweaks for an online session. Like, uh, yeah, maybe uh, one one of the things is actually something that we do also in in, uh, in the software design and process modeling when we do it in in person. Uh, we have some session we go with the similar approach to mob programming. Only one person is allowed to touch, or maybe one person is allowed to speak, but we need an asynchronous, quiet way to provide feedback so everybody can post hotspots. And uh, yeah, but in a quiet way. And that the modeler might be the only person able to, yeah, solve a hotspot at the time without having that much of a conversation unless yeah, the modeler wants to start it. Because the conversation, it's really, really a lot of interruption in this, uh, in, in this scenario. So we, we might need to find that another discipline working at this uh, at this level. Yeah. yeah, I was just gonna mention basically, I mean, not the same, but I was gonna mention that we shouldn't compare. From now, I feel that we shouldn't compare with even storming. So from now on, it's just using the same pattern here, but I mean, the visuals, but but yeah, it's it's an online brainstorming, which is still fine. Well, I, I, I do want to add in there, uh, one thing of the last meetup discussion, uh, where we talked about uh, three types of culture uh, or Jape mentioned. And what I do feel is missing here is the, the personal connection with people. So we're just putting down here what we know, but the real wisdom and potential is usually uh, submerged into people. And I cannot now, I cannot do a lot of group dynamics to get that, to get the design. So Jape called it, uh, you have uh, designing behavior. 
right? So we're now just passing in what we know, but we cannot uh, we cannot connect on a personal level, and that bugs me a lot uh, yep. about this session. And and that's why I cannot really go low and deep into the group dynamics and see where the conflicts arise, because we don't have a lot of conflict in the way I would see it. And in conflict comes learning, becomes redesigning. And that's what I'm really missing here. So yeah, you cannot relate the two. So it's not storming. Uh, I agree with you on that uh, part. And I, that's I would what, say what I'm missing. There's, there's nothing kind of controversial except should we name the systems or not? Like uh, we, no, nobody's had a very different idea how about, about how to sell tickets. We're not, we're not arguing about like, no, you should buy the tickets after the conference. That's a disruptive yeah. idea. You join the conference and you pay the ticket later. Uh, we are all agreeing or something. We're just, yeah, using this as an example, but uh, it was not supposed to trigger discussion, I guess. And, uh, yeah. and it's, it's not triggering any discussion about, yeah, precision little thing. And we are, uh, we are basically measuring who knows the ticketing issues a little bit better than the other guys yeah. in this discussion. So we're, we're, not, we're not going into conflict here. Oh, no, not at all. With an event storming real life, that is the true power for me. You're making the conflicts visible and then you dive into them to discover more. And design your system better. That's for me is the power of real life event storming. So it sounds like that that's a twofold problem. As in one, it's the domain that we've chosen to look at, and two, because of the nature of the online system, it's harder for us. It's harder for this conflict to emerge. Yeah, in a visible way, anyway. Okay. Yeah. So um, shall we do some questions? Um, we've got from one from Stojan. What would be the event checked online for prices? That's an external event, not the event that represents a state change of the system we are modeling. Do we need to model these kinds of events? Uh, so that was a while back, I think. And wouldn't it be easier near to the traditional way if all participants are in the same room using Miro? That would benefit, would have a digital version of a model out of the box. What do you think of that part? That would be a torture for me. Yeah. Yeah, like, I, I would like to stand. I would like to move around. I would like to, to, to see people. Like uh, if uh, uh, I'm not looking at you, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the screen. I'm, I'm losing. Yeah. Maybe I have a little icons with your face somewhere, but I don't see your expression. I don't know if you like what I'm doing right now. I'm, I don't like, don't like if you're appreciating what I'm doing. And I'm, I have to wait for the next feedback round to understand what's your emotion in, in this place. This is actually creating... A little bit of an extra cycle of uncertainty. Uh, I am asking myself, I'm too little, and and this is extra noise in the brain, which is related to the tooling. If people are smiling to me, uh, just giving me a gesture, Alberto, yeah, let let's go, please. Uh, this is totally missing, and so I'm, I'm feeling a little bit less confident in the in the action yeah. because I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. So is, is this, if I hear you correctly, is this tool actually creating a false sense of reality? So a false sense in a way that you think uh, that, that we're all aligned, where we think that we agree, but actually we're not because we cannot see each other's expressions. Uh, absolutely, yes, but not only. So I might think that everybody agrees because you are quiet, maybe you just put your microphone in mute and just start looking for the button to, to, to switch it on. So I might end up talking a little longer. At the same time, I have no feedback at all. So it's just like I'm talking in, in an empty room and uh, I'm looking a lot to facial expression when, when doing discussion. If, uh, if people, a person is just raising an eyebrows, oh, that's a signal that maybe something is wrong. I will wait my words carefully. Now I feel like uh, I'm running blinded in, in a room and, uh, and, I, and I don't know what people are thinking about what I'm saying. And I, and I hear this noise of my brain saying like, what are people saying about what you said? It might be narcissistic, I don't know. Uh, but uh, I, I'm, I'm 
completely losing this. So some people are happy with this. They know what people are thinking around them anyway. But for me, I, I need this uh, this feedback to try to understand, am I stepping on somebody's toe? Did I say something that uh, pissed off somebody? Or maybe there's something because of they, they, they built the legacy or something. I need to see this expression. And uh, well, now it's low risk workshop. So, okay, no problem. But in general, I feel this pressure of uh, not knowing, not having eye contact, not getting a smile or a disapproval eyebrows. I'm, I'm completely blind. And this is creating extra work for me. Yeah. Yeah. You've, you've, may, you've it, lost the dimension of, uh, I'm sorry, uh, non verbal cues. Yep. T totally. Which is, which is like, what is it, 80% of communication is non verbal? So yeah, I don't know the numbers, but yeah. <laughs> well, you know, 80% of all statistics are made up. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we've got a few questions uh, from Rebecca, actually, uh, trying to ask her if she wants to ask these live. But the, the first one, she said, uh, it is definitely slower, uh, but it is painful. So what is the value of this tool? We can move the stickies easier. It's easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can move the stickies easier. Is, is that the only thing we feel like that's the value of the tool? <laughs> and, and because the, the second question is, so remote mobbing works, but people have developed protocols to make it work. Could this be something you need to do in order to make it truly collaborative? Is it possible without face-to-face? -face? Um, yeah, I, I must admit that I'm a full-time mobber. Uh, and it works. <laughs> so uh, I don't think I have the illusion that it worked. So uh, yeah, that, that's the idea of the book. We need to, <laughs> to write down uh, the rules for this to work and, and maybe name it differently. Yeah. yeah, I would say mob programming is actually a good source for ideas and, uh, and discipline in, in, in this space. And, and we are we, mob modeling or what, whatever I can call it in, when, when I run it, like uh, only one person allow, allowed to touch and move things and uh, multiple people giving, giving feedback is one of the direction we are going in the real world. And I think that, uh, and this is happening, let's say for seven minutes, then it's somebody else's responsibility. That's a format that could go for a tool like this. But I, I think we need to understand exactly which are the real constraints an online model tool is um, is given to us because it's affecting the way we are working in uh, in, in many ways, but uh, not not only the visible ones. Cool. Yeah. So um, let's see. We've got uh, one more question coming up. I think. Yeah. Uh, no, that we already discussed. And the other one we already discussed too. The other one was, uh, so how would you add in free tickets that bypass the normal payment process, e.g. free tickets for speakers for giveaway? I already gave a hotspot for that part. So uh, uh, there are some, uh, Rebecca saying, there are some remote mob program patterns that Michael Keeling and Joe Rondi wrote about in Agile 2019. You might look at, the, uh, at that for some ideas. Cool. That sounds great. Yeah. So, uh, do we want to continue and finish this, uh, or do we have enough experience uh, doing this at the, the first time? We can we can run an another session, of course, with all these uh, heuristics in and to see how we can do it different next time. Not call it event storming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there's a thing that we didn't try, which is uh, actually applying the. Uh, collaborative game uh, patterns that I usually do. So instead of going step by step on a large scale, we, we might try the other approach like, uh, well, let's try to build it from the beginning, or maybe let's try to build it from the end, but be strict on the grammar. Yes. So it, it forces people to be on, on the same flow. It might make, make every single step more uh, yeah, annoying, but, uh, if the hotspots are supposed to be silent, but yeah, visibly uh, flashing in our eyes, it, it could be a honest way to lead the conversation. So give, given the tooling and uh, 
what we are seeing today, I, I think that the, that might be the, the one of the best combos or or a good starting point for uh, for leading the discussion. But it it needs uh, yeah experienced practitioners like uh, being having grammar flu- fluency in this uh, in this space. So and that that's something that we uh, could work decently. Like we've been doing remote modeling session. We still don't call them storming. We use the same notation. It works when you have good experience, when it's not so many people, and we actually kept them confined to the development team, not to the information exchange with the business people, because uh, because it's a torture for them. Just like yeah. So do we want to try that now, or because uh, that sounds more like uh, yeah, remote uh, modeling? Which now you mention it, I did that and not event storming on Miro before. Mm. So you we, want to try that out now, or we might we might try to see how it how it works. So let's say give me seven minutes to try to see the dynamics of trying to do it uh, as quickly as I can. And uh, yeah, yeah. Could, could, but, could you go to uh, uh, so um, if you could cancel your uh, thing, uh, Barry, and then already done. Uh, Alberto, could you start your uh, sharing in Miro, your screen sharing in Miro, so we can follow what you're doing? Okay, so how do I do that? So the bottom we'll... left corner, there's this uh, screen with a screen share icon. You cannot start screen share while the other participant is sharing. Uh, yeah, in... I, I'm still seeing this joint thing. Yeah, so okay, I'll try, try, try it now. Yeah, now you can do it, Alberto. Okay. No, I can't. I could start it here. Well, this is also the thing of uh, this tooling, right? So it's fantastic. I had a great idea, but it doesn't work online. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's, uh, that's something. Yeah, that just start it and I'll follow you on my screen. So. Uh... Let me see where your. Uh... Okay, so I'm going on on my mirror, and that that's it. Okay, and you're yeah. sharing it. Yeah, and okay. I will follow you. I will. Okay, your, so uh... let, let let's uh, uh, let's try it. So checked on live for prices. Uh, should be price check. Yeah. Uh, actually, I just uh, I don't want to. So I don't want to do this. I'm trying to remove this. I'm going. Go in, um, freelancer way you called it like uh, like this i would like to be the freelancer i would like to have oh shit sorry where where is the legend now i i, I wanted to be quick and then i was lower okay <laughs> so taking this bring copy the legend in in here so um uh, yeah So I don't wanna ticket type selected. Okay. Need uh, here. I will need the uh, policy before the purchase ticket. Type of command. Uh, ticket type selected. I need to move this stuff here and and here too. So and now I have an event. I need a policy. So the policy might be to whenever a ticket type is selected, it might be, uh, yeah, uh, redirected to uh, uh, order page. Please correct me if uh, you don't like it. Or, uh, yeah. <laughs> summary. Okay. And then I would say, I think we all feel your pain when you need to rewrite something or make a typo. Yeah. So I'm, I'm actually looking for a, uh, whenever a ticket type is selected, then uh, we're going to display the, 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 the summary page. So do you... Or, well, actually, it looks like redundant. I will go for. 
read model here and uh, summary uh, and, and a few other stuff. So given this information that I see, I'm a human, I'm a freelancer here. Given what I see here, I feel like, okay, I can go for a command and I will say like, okay, that's exactly uh, like uh, buy ticket. So this will go into a system when I have this, I would like to have it. I see a buying ticket system, payment type selected, ticket, ticket type selected. Actually, I would like to do this uh, already and uh, payment type selected. Let's say this is gonna be a form. Well, all of this is uh, displayed price. Uh, so payment method and uh, number and what else and uh, ticket type yeah so given this is clear i'm expecting this to be the form by in in the ticket system i'm expecting uh the oh, i'm expecting something that didn't happen here i'm expecting the ticket type to be reserved or the ticket to be reserved while I complete the purchase. Does it make any sense? Yes. Yeah. So I, I need now I need to move things around, which is annoying here, but uh, I need to select the whole thing uh, horrible and uh, and move this away. I don't know if it's better in the real world, but yes, now I have a policy which is uh, a connector in in between. Uh, the policy is just like uh, uh, yeah, maybe ticket. I might actually disagree with what I just done now that I see this, but when it's just like, uh, uh, yeah, payment uh, policy for, uh, uh, let's say, for, let's call it online payment policy without calling the products. And it just like uh, might be to kind of repair the payment. Inside the payment provider, so you you basically recommending that if not even storming because online it uh, yeah as we discussed previously it doesn't make that much sense, but uh, adding these visuals so like adding these patterns in order to like modeling forward and design the architecture and stuff so this could work. So if, like if, on, if you know the color line, coding, right? yeah. I could follow it because I know the color coding. Yep. Uh, actually, the color coding is a little bit annoying because of the color have been pre-selected <laughs> already. But uh, we are having a discussion on uh, on a format which is constraining the discussion to be in inside the color coding. Yeah. But the, but the really the real thing that I that I'm doing I was actually in aggressive modeling mode. So mm -hmm. I, I I know this domain a little so I could go fast, but one of the interesting things for me is just like, I usually go that fast anyway. Doesn't matter if I know the domain or not. I'm just trying really, really quickly. And then I get back and look at this. It, it actually sucks. So you are missing this the part where I'm destroying my model. So mm -hmm. uh, for on, a, on a five or a seven minute slot, I run like hell because I, I want to get to the place where I get the money or where I want to get to the place where I deliver the ticket to the attendees. But I know there are some steps and the, the color coding is forcing me to get through the steps. Okay. But uh, the, my, my mind attitude is uh, I'm not designing the system. I'm actually running to the, to the end. And, uh, and then I get to step back and say like, okay, do I like what I've just done? I, what the hell I did? Uh, I, I don't know what I'm doing, honestly. And so I might say like, actually, I might not be reserving. This might not be the re ticket reserved already. It might actually choose parallel policy, which, which says like uh, when the purchase is started, uh, I, I temporarily set up a reservation and this is a reservation policy. And it might be another parallel activity, which is uh, leading you to payment. If you selected an online payment thing. 
if mm -hmm. you selected an invoice uh, thing, then we need a business discussion with somebody saying like, what do we do with invoice billing? It might be depending on the customer, on or maybe I will reserve the, the ticket for you for maybe two, three weeks while I'm waiting for the payment. It, 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 it's a different thing, and that's exactly one type of uh, business choice when we need to talk with the business. Actually, that's the only moment when we needed to have a business validation of one of our choices. Yeah. A, a good thing here is I started doing the hotspots while you were being busy, right? <laughs> and yep. not disturb you and just let you be uh, moving on. So I and think then, that would that would be a one big heuristic once you try to do whatever it's called online is to don't stop a person explaining, just write down your hotspots. Yep. yep. Yeah, so that, that would be a great... Uh, so this actually reminds me of uh, me, uh, Bruno and Thomas creating the workshop for DDD Europe last year is uh, there in Paris, I was here, but we needed to discuss, uh, it was about event storming, of course, but we needed to discuss our models. So what are we talking about? And we actually did the same thing, where we just went through the color coding and they went through their color coding and I went through my color coding and then we actually combined it. But yeah, that wasn't storming, but that just was putting out your ideas in an event storming format. Yeah, one, of, one of the great things that might happen later is one, if, if the color coding is consistent, similar areas look very similar. Of course, you still have to read this because uh, if you change the name of the thing, it will still look like exactly the same color sequence. Uh, but you, you can you can combine pattern a little bit more easily and still look like, oh, that's a fantastic job, even if, no, you just restricted the variability of the shapes. Um, it might be good to isolate sub-processes and put them in some other ways in uh, that's one of the things which is uh, actually better than doing it in uh, in the real world. That, that's where uh, the online tools are kind of uh, shining, isolate the processes, put it in a box somewhere, maybe connect them with arrows and, uh, and, and, and some other things. But in terms of dynamics, uh, yeah, let, let the, the person with the mouse in the hand uh, go as fast as possible and then uh, collect the feedback with hotspots, but uh, yeah, doing giving real time feedback means like we stopping uh, everything. Okay, cool. So, um, thank you for that, Alberto. Uh, so, uh, want me to stop sharing it now and uh, just uh, wrap this thing up? Is that okay for everyone? Yep, that's good for me. That's okay for me. Yeah. So, Sophia, if you want to wrap up uh, and. Uh, I think uh, I, I just want to devote uh, at most 10 minutes on, on just running through uh, your one sentence uh, lesson learned or that, that the most important for you from uh, today's session. So can, can we start with, for instance, Barry? Okay, thanks. Uh, so I, this, this is the easy one because I'm going to get to say what everyone else has been saying. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, no, but I, I definitely agree with the points that have been made, but the one sentence would be uh, one person needs to lead the actual modeling and going through the flows, and then anyone else that's observing should leave the hotspots, and then that becomes, uh, once the flow is complete, you can do another iteration and start addressing the hotspots. Um, that's definitely better than having everyone working in isolation, and then not really having a focused discussion, because it's, it, it be its nature, it has to be led by uh, one person yeah. at each at each juncture. Okay, thanks for sharing. Maxim, you want to share your thought? Um, yeah, maybe one thing we could try is like when we uh, do pair programming or more programming, well, whenever someone has an ID, uh, the thing is that they, um, this uh, person um, has to uh, give the keyboard to someone and, uh, and ask uh, the person to type what they have in mind, actually. So, and that would be an idea rather than letting Alberto putting his stickies uh, on the board. And it's that someone will do it for him and uh, waiting for uh, Alberto to say, okay, now put a blue sticky there and write that, then put a another one and put a, an orange one and then a, a mm -hmm. black and stuff like that. So uh, there's kind of a transmission going on and, and they, it could 
um, have their uh, discussion between two person and and letting the others also putting uh, hot spots uh, would be a, a good idea as well. So that's okay. something we can try maybe. Yeah, sure. Thanks for sharing. Kenny? Yeah, so um, an interesting thing. Um, so I think everything has already been said. I'm really missing the personal touch here. Uh, it can be really useful. Um, it can be really useful uh, the way we did it at the last time. And I think it's still, it's still better than nothing if, if you're uh, remote. Uh, but it takes some time to get used to and to, to get the, the agreement straight. And we didn't do and uh, make the agreements to start. And there was a, a great comment about Stephen Crumb just now on the chat that says, can this really be a tryout with experience event storming facilitating knowing the domain already? Uh, <laughs> should we do this in real life? Uh, thing and I think it would be a lot more interesting if we really take some uh, business domain experts and developers and, and see how it work out then because I think we already feel restricted to this I cannot imagine people that hasn't uh, done this before or uh, mm -hmm. the business people I usually work with and that's people who usually don't have time and I'm not sure if they would have time for this so for yeah. me, I probably won't won't uh, do it. Okay, thanks, Alberto. So talking about the limitation, I would say it's already been uh, been, been said. Uh, but if we reframe the problem, is uh, we need to model remotely. Uh, well, let's try to get on the positive side, which is uh, I, I think the most important thing is that we need a different type of discipline. And the discipline is going to be heavily influenced by the tooling. I would say some of the things that uh, we might have in Miro might not be working with draw.io or some other tools. So we need to actually really be able to tailor the thing on the technological stack. Well, so we can make a lot of improvement in this place and we need discipline. At the same time, discipline is a cutoff. So uh, like... Uh, Mob programming requires discipline and needs people really motivated to do mob programming. Uh, it, even this workshop, like, oh, you need to have discipline to be part of it. Well, that's, that's violating one of the entry points of business model. We need it to be easy for other people to, to join in. And it's easier on the big picture, clearer than this one. I would say the discipline might cut off occasional contributors. Uh, uh, because, uh, well, that, that's too complicated for me. Or, or the business side, uh, uh, you only can write the policy. They're going to feel like they're doing something wrong most of the time, which is uh, stopping the, the spontaneous contribution. I, I can totally relate to all of your takeaways, actually. So for my side, it's just I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't recommend to do event storming online. But I'm very, very happy uh, that we are yeah, we tried it out okay, and we uh, had a lot, lot of lessons learned, I think. Uh, also, if there is a need to do that for some reasons, uh, I wouldn't recommend it for beginners, definitely not. <laughs> so this is not for beginners. I mean, uh, even uh, who does even storm for the first time, it's, it's not, not a good decision. Also, this triggered me uh, an idea for our next session, or not next, but a uh, session in the, in the future. Uh, what we could definitely try out online is, is domain storytelling. So I maybe will contact Stefan because it, it is something that I think it would uh, work online. Uh, this session just triggered me this idea. So uh, I think that's it. So I'm really happy that we tried this out. Thanks for, thanks for joining for everyone. So for all our attendees and for all our panel presenters. Thank you very much, guys. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.